talking about was that uh, if we basically have an electron and if we have a very short wavelength associated with it, it becomes easier to probe the nucleus. And uh, if we can probe the nucleus, we can actually find out more information about this. And that is why this scaling and these things are very important. So if we just uh, uh, try to understand, okay, since we are doing it on a very preliminary level, so we are not going to go into too much uh, of uh, details. Okay. Uh, okay. So what happens is basically, uh, in general, we know that uh, electrons will be revolving around the nucleus, but uh, if we go into the quantum model, it's not that it is going to follow a definite path. Okay, so whatever image is shown here is more or less not correct. Obviously, we know that, but it's just an uh, just an estimation. Okay, for for this purpose. So what we say is, if we are basically considering uh, the electrons, okay, we have uh, uh, it uh, spread over a region of 10 to the power minus 10 meter. But on the other hand, if you consider the nucleus, it is 10 to the power minus of 15 meters. So this is a basically a very, very small region based on which actually even Rutherford was successful in making his experimental prediction. So uh, if you consider energy level, there are uh, atomic energy levels, okay? And there we actually consider more or less even the electronic energy levels. So electrons at which energy level they are, if they want to jump to the excited level, we are applying some kind of energy and that is basically a different kind of uh, energy studies altogether. But when we come to the nuclear, it becomes uh, slightly different because here we are talking about the energy levels of uh, nucle uh, neutrons and protons. Okay? So in general, the nucleons. So, so till now we have studied about X-rays and we know how X-rays are generated. Electrons are knocked out from one of the energy levels and then there is a difference in energy and then that is given out in the form of x-rays. So uh, that is very important uh, to understand and uh, the similar thing also happens within the nucleus but of course uh, if we are really thinking about exciting a neutron or a proton the amount of energy that we need is on a different scale altogether. So that is very important. So in general we know atom in general is neutral so and, and then we are actually having this transition between the electronic states. So here we are having the transition between the nucleic states. So we are going to look into these things when we advance into this syllabus. So in general, uh, till now we said that, okay, it's just proton or just neutron. And then and we have got, let's say, a, a, a diameter of 10 to the power minus 15 meter. But we know that it's not that simple. We do have quarks there. So here what happens, the transition, the important part is the transition is caused between the nuclear states and not the electronic states. So whenever we are going to do any kind of, let's say, band diagram or all those things, it's going to be totally different from that of electron. And that is why it's important to understand that uh, the approach also needs to be different because dimensions are different and so on. So, so if we just uh, consider, let's say, a positive charge and a neutral charge, which is neutron and proton, in general, we say these are the uh, values which are used. Okay, So this will be one of the classwork today. Okay, I hope all of you have pen and paper. We are going to do it in some time. What we have is we have a proton and a proton has got uh, an energy of 938.20 sorry mass of 938.27 MeV per C square. So MeV per C square is one of the most prominent units used in this case because uh, you can definitely use uh, uh, kg but what happens is you are having a different scale of 10 to the power minus 27 kg 10 to the power minus 27 kg for both neutron and proton. So we preferably use this MeV per C square. Also, it has got some other applications which you're going to see later. Because of this, uh, similar properties between uh, neutron and proton, okay, at least in terms of mass, they are sometimes classified as the same object. And that is why the term nucleon is used. We do understand that, of course, of course we, if we say nucleon means it's proton and neutron which are there at the uh, nuclei. But then uh, nucleon also has this significance that proton and neutron show a lot of similar behavior, okay? And they don't have any uh, issues with uh, opposite charges and so on because the one is neutral. And because of this, uh, their behaviors are sometimes very much uh, similar. So when we talk about uh, nucleons, so as I said in the first class that uh, it's very important that our quantum mechanics is uh, uh, good, okay? At least uh, quantum mechanics concept needs to be on the preliminary level, it needs to be good because uh, we are going to do 
or, or we are going to use Schrodinger equation and all again and again in uh, studying nuclear physics. Probably not in this course, but in general, if you are studying it in detail, definitely you need a lot of quantum mechanics. So, uh, in general, we know that they are nothing but uh, half uh, spin particles and they are called fermions. And uh, if we consider a particle with uh, spin one, uh, we basically call that as bosons. We already know these things, but uh, we are only sticking to fermions for now. And the radius is uh, 10 to the power minus 15 meter. Okay, more or less uh, it's measured. Uh, Rutherford alpha scattering experiment was also one of the preliminary experiments done for that. And usually we take it in terms of Fermi. I'm just doing it so that I'm, I'm considering that all of us have just started with the syllabus, so just doing the basics here. The charge for proton would be nothing but plus E and for neutron it's uh, neutral. And then uh, if we just go into further technical details, uh, we know that uh, protons and neutrons are not something which are fundamental. Although we call them fundamental, but they are not fundamental. What happens is that uh, proton has got uh, com combined with uh, three quarks and they are up quark, up quark and down quark. And neutron is up, down, down. So uh, how do you remember this? I, I don't know what mnemonic you can use, but we, there are different ways of remembering this. So uh, please don't mix this up because this is the beginning of quark theory. Uh, in for fourth semester, we are going to study more about uh, these standard model and uh, particle physics. Okay, so we will use more and more of these quarks. Okay, apart from up and down, there are four more quarks which we usually know preliminary. Okay, stage, chart, top, and bottom. So all six of them usually will combine and form different particles. So in general, as, a, as I said, the proton and neutron are not fundamental. They are uh, made up of quarks. Now these quarks, uh, we know that uh, are actually having a different dimension altogether and it's less than uh, 10 to the power minus 18 meter. So 10 to the power minus 15 meter, within that we have got three more particles, 10 to the power minus 18 meter or less. So, so definitely they're, they're, these are actually tightly packed, okay? So we do have uh, the up quark and the down quark. And then if we say that uh, proton has got certain energy, definitely the up quark and the down quark will also have some energy, okay? And they are usually measured uh, in this, okay? And then uh, we basically have the charge. So charge is two by three and for down quark it is minus one by three. So we are not going to look into it, but, but the thing is, I, I think uh, I can tell you this. So what happens is, in general, if we consider, let's say, uh, up quark, up quark, and down quark, okay? We have got uh, up, uh, we have up, the charge is 2 by 3, so you can take 2 by 3, okay? Then later, just wait, seven, yeah. Uh, So if you consider 2 by 3 plus 2 by 3 minus 1 by 3, you can find out what okay, charge of proton. And this is what we are going to do here. So if we just consider this. Um, we just consider this 2 by 3 plus 2 by 3, which is because it's up and up. So we are taking 2 by 3 and minus 1 by 3. So you can just take the LCM, so which is nothing but 3, and this is 2 plus 2, 4, minus 1 is 3. So this is 1. So that's why the proton has got a positive 1 charge. So that means it is basically doing this uh, uh, conservation of charge idea. And at the same time, if you consider something like uh, neutron, you can see it's neutral. Because down, down, it is minus 1 by 3, minus 1 by 3, plus 2 by 3, all that scattered become 0. So this is the basic idea, okay? And then this is where we actually start. And then this particle gets excited if we actually apply a very high energy of the order of, let's say, around uh, uh, 10 to the power 9 EV. So that means that we need a quite large energy. But anyway, we are going to look into these scales more and more later okay, in our later classes. So in general, when we actually denote uh, uh, nuclei, okay, what are the different things that we already know? Then we are just going to start from there. So what we do is this. So, in general, uh, uh, nuclei are typically referred to by the number of nucleons, okay? So, we have got the protons and the neutrons, how many do they have and that is how we represent. So, these things are already clear to us. Uh, I, I hope that all of you can just revise this once because it might be a bit rusty if you have not done it in the recent times. So, the total number of nucleons, okay, which is basically called the mass number is given 
by n plus z. Okay, so we have got the number of neutrons and the number of protons, and this is something. But then uh, we have to remember that uh, when we consider the number of protons, uh, it will actually be defined uh, and it will actually represent the chemical properties also. So it defines the chemical symbol and it is also referred to as the nuclear charge. So sometimes if you're confused, okay, someone says, okay, tell me the new charge of proton and then someone tells, okay, what is the charge of, what is nuclear charge? So both are same, okay, so these are all uh, the basic things we already have it. Okay? So next is something which I would like you all to do now, okay, if you have a piece of paper. But before that, let me just give you a brief here. Atomic mass unit. So in general, when we consider something like an atomic mass unit, we say that uh, 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 931.5, if you remember this, I think we have already, we have already done it in our classes, cross system. Where from this term comes, okay, how do we get this? So basically this comes from the Einstein's fundamental equation of E is equal to mc square. And why we consider this is because when we are actually taking this, um, uh, we are, when we are considering this uh, term which we call as uh, carbon, it, it, it usually happens that the number of protons and the number of neutrons exactly equals to the mass of carbon, okay, very close to 12. So, so because uh, we already know that uh, when we consider something like uh, the mass of the proton and mass of the neutron and we actually try to combine them, the total mass will be actually different from that of the mass of proton and neutron separately for the simple reason what we call as the binding energy. Because in the process of combining proton and neutron together, some mass is lost and that mass is equivalent to the binding energy of the nucleons. So if we have that binding energy, this cannot be exactly same, okay? But uh, in general, it is observed that for carbon, it is more or less similar, which is 12. So that's why carbon is taken as a standard, okay? So you have to basically consider this, that this is actually not true for any other nucleus, okay? This is not in general true for other any other nucleus. What happens is the nuclear, or the atomic mass is not simply the sum of its constituent nucleus. So if you consider six protons and seven neutrons, okay, for example, let's say nitrogen, six protons and seven neutrons, if you combine them, the total mass is not going to be 13, okay. There is going to be some loss there, and as a result of which, the total mass is not going to be 13. So that is why it is not considered a standard. So uh, in general, we have to account for the binding energy, which we don't do. So usually we consider mass of the carbon as well. If we just look into this uh, unit conversions, which is actually very important because we are going to look into it uh, more, more and more. One U or one atomic mass unit uh, is generally 931.494 MeV per C square. This is just corrected to three places of decimal. In general, we can take it just 931.5 uh, okay, for all practical purposes. Like for example, you are doing it in your exam and all you want to write down an answer for that. I think 931.5 is perfectly fine. And then uh, we already know Einstein's relation, which is E is equal to M C spin. And then from there, we can actually find out what is the mass of proton, neutron, and neutron. So in general, we know that uh, mass of, uh, let's say, electron is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg. And how do we convert it into this particular unit of 0 0.511 MeV per C square? We're going to come to that. But before that, why 1 U is equal to 931.5 MeV per C square? That is the question. Okay. This is the thing that I have also done in the previous classes, but uh, okay, not really. Yeah. So, so, so I usually do this, okay, because this is important. We usually know the value, but somehow we are not converting it and we are not really sure. So, what we can do is uh, the question, okay, uh, I think probably this is the first question we are doing. Uh, you have to convert. Uh, one U, which I have already given it to you, okay, one U or one atomic mass unit is 1.66 into 10 to the power of minus 27 kg. You have to convert it to MeV per C square. Okay. Okay. So basically, hum, only, pehle, pehle whenever you are doing anything, you should remember that aim, kya hai. aim is to show that 1U is equal to 931.5 MeV per C square. This is two ways. One is simple. E is equal to M. E is equal to M. C square. 
सो का यूनिट होता है So one EB is equal to one point six into ten to the power minus ninety. Okay, and then so what we can do is uh, uh, okay, I'll take this way. One EB power six square. So that means I can simply do the calculation this way. One point six into ten to the power minus ninety. एकदम रो कैलकुलेशन है ताकि तुमको कंफ्यूज ना हो डिवाइडेड बाय 3 इनटू 10 टू द पावर 8 होल स्क्वायर देयर आर अदर वेज आल्सो बट आई एम जस्ट गोइंग इट इन अ सिट सो इन दिस रूल क्वेश्चन इज नॉट शो इज अ टेक्स्ट सो सो इफ वी डू एमबी वी नो जस्ट टेक दिस वैल्यू ओनली वी कैन अप्लाई इट ठीक है यहां पे क्लियर है अभी के बोल रहा हूं ओके आपको इनटू नॉट इनटू कांट डिवाइड ऑन बाय मी So it's divided by nine, and then. Sir, screen ko thoda right ki taraf shift ki je dikhai nahi de raha. Yeh to pura screen aana chahiye to. Yeh to main thodi kar raha. Technology kar raha hai. Wo tu swipe swipe kar raha hai. Settings ki pao isme to pura screen. Haan. Swipe kar raha hu. Aap kya? ऊपर ले जाएंगे स्क्वायर so you can use this particular relation you can use this particular relation and then yahan pe hum log agar isko 1 lenge isko e divided by c square karenge aur e hum logo ne already calculate kiya hai jo bhi value yahan aayega you should get this so agar 1 kg itna hai to what will be this much this amount so agar 1 kg is this this will be nothing but uh, uh, 1.6 into or 6 6 into 10 to the power minus 27 is 5.6 into 10 to the power 29 into 1.66 into 10 to the power minus 27. So if you do the calculation, uh, approximately a line will be as well. So I have not done any analysis of this. I have done calculation of the rough power. There is no problem. So so it's a rough calculation like that. So you are getting going to get around line 31.5. This is like one way of doing it. Okay, this is a very raw way of doing it. Uh, you can basically take uh, one mv plus a square, convert it. Okay. Then you get the value, and then you can just take the unitary method and solve it. So this is how this is done. Okay.